we are planning uh, our trip into Syria next week. We have got confirmation from all the uh, Kurdish authorities on both sides that they will help facilitate the trip. Apparently uh, the humanitarian situation is catastrophic and, and they are eager for us to cover it. So they, they are going to facilitate the whole trip inside Syria. We just crossed the border into Syria about an hour ago um, and we are now on our way to Kamishli and to have a, to have a security briefing with the authorities there and to plan the itinerary of our, of our uh, next couple of days here in, in Syria. So this is our first morning waking up in Syria, it's about 5 a.m. Uh, the car is leaving at 6 and we're having some breakfast before. Behind me you can see the border of Turkey. Uh, we are in, in a Kurdish controlled autonomous region known as Rojava, which basically translates to, to West Kurdistan. And uh, we are going uh, to Raqqa today. After meeting with the media center uh, guy yesterday, we planned out what we were able to do. Um, and our first plan was to meet uh, IDPs that fled from, from Afrin um, because of the Turkish invasion. But the security situation is too dire um, close to Afrin in the Aleppo province. So they said best not to go there. Um, and we're taking that advice seriously. So we're going to Raqqa, which is safer, at least during the day. We can't stay there overnight. So we're going to Raqqa, and then at night, I think we're actually going all the way to Kobane, which should be safe, and then back to Raqqa the next day again to work. So logistics is a bit big uh, issue, or it's a big thing that we have to work with. But I think we have everything set now for this for these couple of days here. So we just came from a sort of a security briefing with the Syrian Democratic Forces and they are joining us uh, on the way to Raqqa. Celine Dion is blasting through the speakers as we um, went through a village on the outskirts. Enter the checkpoint into the city, and you can already see that the devastation is uh, massive. So, we have stopped now doing some interviews um, in, yeah, in a neighborhood uh, that's been hit hard, but there's uh, we met a man here who is uh, moving back, uh, so Urban is interviewing him. As you can see, for me the light is really bad, but there's still visual with all these terribly, terribly destroyed houses. I mean, it's yeah, a few of them are standing, but they're scattered with bullet holes and all the windows are broken. So it's, uh, yeah, it's the same feeling as when we entered Mosul, it's just... The devastation is almost total. We 
stayed in Raqqa until around 2 p.m. and the last hour was spent trying to arrange uh, what we're gonna do tomorrow. And I think everything worked out fine. Uh, we're gonna spend a day with uh, a group of volunteer firefighters who are cleaning up the, the city of, of human remains and, and, you know, actually, well, dead bodies that are found or still laying in the rubble and in the streets probably gonna be quite gory and uh, disturbing, but we'll, we'll see. We're following uh, an ambulance that's going to take us to the first responders now. So this is the site next to the stadium. Uh, it's a park and they are uh, digging in a, in a grave where they just pulled out the body that they said was an ISIS fighter. Um, you could still see the beard of the rotting corpse and um, and he had a, a military badge or a uniform on him, they said. Uh, and there seems to be more bodies in there. When they open up the body bags to check the course, the smell that comes out is, is horrible. Um, most people here are wearing masks as this to, to protect them a bit from the smell. We're following the ambulance to to another excavation site. They're apparently working on three different places today. They expected it to be, I mean, it could be up to 100 bodies in the in the last place we visited. They're uh, using bulldozers or heavy machinery to, to clear the rubble and, and then the team goes through the rubble to see if there's any, any remains found. Uh, I mean these houses are just totally destroyed. So they just picked up two other bodies in, in a building nearby and put them on a truck and we're now going to the burial place. Um, yeah, it was a total of 12 bodies today. We're now at the burial ground where the 12 bodies are going to be buried. Uh, I think the, the first responders are going to say a prayer for them or something um, and it's kind of a mass grave as you can see most of them are unidentified so they don't know more than if it's an ISIS soldier or a you know civilian sometimes they can tell from you know if they have weapons on them and, and maybe their hairstyle or clothing but sometimes people wear the same clothes uh, and were forced to wear dash clothes so they're gonna offload the, the truck now.
we're back at the guest house in uh, Amuda and it's uh, yeah it's about a four hour drive from Raqqa um, and it's not really until now when you go through the images on the computer you start to actually take in what we've seen today um, I mean it's it, it was so many dead bodies there was children there were ISIS soldiers that apparently blew themselves up. They still had traces of their suicide vests on them. And they had to check for IEDs. IEDs. Um, and it was just a very, very long day with a lot of a lot of death. Um, so it, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I don't know what to say.